collection within a collection. Thank you so much for coming to join me here on my update. It's been eight months. This is a very precious collection within my orchid collection because it is something that happened while we still could and it is a plant swap I did with the orchid room back in the day when it was still possible to ship orchids freely to the UK from Europe. Since Brexit, that is history. So this little collection is super precious and I'm really, really banking on making them happy because there is a certain nostalgia when you think in about two or three years time, people are gonna think, what? You got orchids from the UK? And then you would say, yeah, once upon a time it was possible. And it wasn't even a headache. Not saying it's not possible now, but it's gonna be pricey. And I'm not very good at smuggling. <laughs> so the orchid room gems, it's been eight months since the last time we saw them. And my sidekick cousin, it is back. Yes, he is looking mighty fine and bringing on some tremendous amounts of new growth. Let's get into it and start with the little ones. I've been treating these catacetum propagations from the orchid room as seedlings. They are in ceramics and perlite and in a semi-hydro setup. I've been a little bit more on the drier side throughout the winter, so the reservoir wasn't always full. I would fill it, tip it out, but the media stayed on the drier side. This is Catacetum albovirens, still sleeping, and I'm hoping that it will wake up soon. But I'm keeping those roots hydrated. I don't want to desiccate them because as a seedling, I think there are different factors that need to be taken into consideration when it comes to catacetums. And they're completely dry, Setup is not a good thing if you're dealing with semi-hydro. So Albovirens is still fast asleep. However, Cygnodes Wine Delight propagation, it has lost and desiccated the part that it came with. This is the bulb that then went into dormancy when I got the orchid the first time. And I've got two new growths coming from that one little bulb, which is Amazing, little overachiever, I would say. I've got one root going down and one root, you're doing it wrong. You've got a job to do, get down there. But if I can get this root to be okay, then that is a good start. And the other growth has not so shown any signs of roots just yet. And again, I'm keeping the media quite wet at this point in time, just to make sure that this little bulb doesn't shrivel out because it's not that big and I don't know how much energy it will have in order to keep up with the two growths that it's doing at this point in time. So it's wakey wakey for Cygnodes Wine Delight, fingers crossed that these little growths can mature to something that will later sustain the orchid for bigger and better things to come. And I have here the Maxima Cerula Gorgeous, gorgeous seedling. It matured a growth when it arrived, which was this one here. Provided a fabulous root system as I drip everywhere. Got roots going down in the pot now. Yes, there is a bit of algae. That is the territory with clear little plastic cups and ceramics and light. But it's doing very, very well. Honestly, I couldn't be more pleased. It's starting to grow some more roots and its newest growth is also right on time. That's a gorgeous new growth. I love it. Maxima Cerula. Yeah. A couple more years in here, I think it's gonna be fine unless the root production becomes so excessive that it has to come out. But then that's a good thing too. Love it. <laughs> And then here is my Colarthrum bicornutum. My goodness, this spike has been on the go throughout the winter. And it is the slowest spike ever. Whether it is the attribute of the orchid, I do not know. Because it's a genus I have not grown before. Little back division that I got here, the growth has matured beautifully. It's nice and plump. 
and I did put everything into the pot at a slant so that the roots of this new growth wouldn't have to do any searching, they would go straight in. But with some light training, I'm going to get the growths now to subsequent growths to grow upright. And if need be, I will reposition the orchid in the pot. But first of all, I want to see what it's going to do with this. So I've lost one bud, but there's still two and we shall see. Pot bound, very excited that this one took off and despite being a slow spike, mature, <laughs> I'm very happy that it is doing well in the self-watering setup. The next one, exciting, exciting, totally pot bound. It already was in September, but <laughs> the pot is now rock hard if I were trying to squeeze it. So it is completely pot bound and it is not done yet. It's growing its next two growths there's one and there's the other tucked in there for the season. The two growths that had started when I got it matured beautifully. Look, not even a size difference. Same size. They just, it's like, okay, here I am. This is what I'm going to do for you. And I'm just so grateful. This is Lodigesia I crossed with Skinnery. Sorry, I didn't mention that. But amazing. Let me show you what else it's doing. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, isn't that a beautiful, beautiful sight? Incredible. Coming straight through. It's going to be nasty having to up pot this one. So for the time being, I'm just going to let it be. Just let it be. It's doing so well. A lot of flushing at this moment, just so that the oxygen stays in the pot without it becoming like, you know, when the orchid roots are pot bound, there's less oxygen in the pot. So I'm flushing this quite regularly now, meaning every two to three days. And then I also have me a beautiful fowl. And I did a resituation video about this one because of the root systems failing. Well, the surface roots you can see are not as happy as they should be, although one is trying to now grow a root tip. I hope that is obvious despite no sun. I don't want to be moving it too much because there is another root growing and I want to save that. But I hope you can see that there's a little bit of a green happening there. And look at what's happened since we've resituated it in the pot. There's another one right there coming up. You're supposed to go down. That was the whole part of the exercise. <clears throat> Okay, as long as, let me turn it around, as long as the one that I was focusing on the repot stays down and continues to grow, I suppose I can be a little bit more generous with the one starting to peek out over the top. This is Phalaenopsis ninja yellow as named by the orchid room. Maybe at this angle you can see the tip of the other one starting to go green. And it is Still doing well. I'm glad to see that the roots are actually starting to do something. Even this one, if it's coming out over the top, that means there's more activity in the pot. And that to me is very, very important. Got to watch the leaves a bit. There was another one, unfortunately, that didn't make it. That was the Serato Stylus Rubra. That didn't make it. And I'm really, really sad about that because these orchids, they come from a very special channel, from a very, very special lady. And under circumstances when orchids were still being shipped from England and Europe and vice versa without any issues. A very precious collection within my collection. And all of them so far are doing well, some great, but well, that is good enough for me. So I hope that you enjoyed this quick update. I appreciate your time very, very much. I have links to the unboxing, how I potted them up, and the first update in the description below. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.